Hello everyone, I have a surprise today. Let's see what's inside this. Got crushed a little bit. Alright, here's the... <laughs> Look at that. This is a close-up, and these are Mexicanus queens, which are basically honeypots. And these are the ones that you usually see online and on YouTube videos. She currently has a couple of pupae. They're all scattered around. And here's the second one. You might notice sand everywhere, and that's just because during shipping it gets tossed around. She's already moved her brood back. It was over here earlier. About a week later, the queen got her first worker, as you can see. There's a few more pupae and some larvae back there that should soon become workers, but look at that worker. It's so, like, oh, it's, it's stuck on cots. I don't have to help with that. But we're going to give them a quick meal. As you can see, the queen is starting to get skinny, but not dangerously. You're back. All right, I gave her some honey, as you can see, right there. But it seems she doesn't want it yet, so I'll just let her be, and hopefully she'll drink in the dark. It's been a little while, and as you can see, they have lots of brood and workers. They have about 15 to 20 workers now, so I'm moving them into a new form of carrier so that they can grow out and have repletes, because if I leave them inside the tube, the queen will continue to act as a replete. As you can see, which is bad, because you want her to lay more eggs. She's, like, really plump right now. Like, it would be probably really delicious. See all the brood. And if you notice some of the workers have black in their gasters or butts, and that's just basically stored protein. Cala right there. Alright, now I will start the dump. This is the formicarium or at house that I will be using. And first I'm going to quickly set it up. Right here is some sand that I'm going to pour in, and basically the workers will use it to help the larvae spin cocoons. You see it's just going in there. I think I put a little too much, but it's fine. Shake it around. And you can see there's a lot, and that should last in quite a while. And I'm going to quickly fill up a syringe with water. I'm gonna move it to the back. I'm gonna fill up this hole right here. You can kind of see it right there. I want some more. Okay. Let's see if that's enough. We can put a little more. It might spill out a little bit, but that's fine. There you go. That's probably an optimal amount of water if you ever have one of these. And usually I would put a barrier around in, in the inside so the ants can't climb, but my barrier basically went bad, so I have to buy a new one. And now I'm going to pour the ant inside. As you can see, look at that queen. So, so plump. A lot of gross stuff to you, but it should be fine. Alright. Actually, you know what? First, I'm going to pour some of that yucky stuff out. Because who likes garbage, right? Alright. 
All right. Now I will pour the end column in. As you can see, some brood is sticking, but it'll be easy to get knock off. I'll move the rest of this off camera because it's all getting disgusting. And I'll be right back. Here they are a little bit after the move. The queen was so fat that I had to move her in the nest myself manually using a chopstick. And I did turn the heat down a little bit just because my other ants are at hibernation and I don't have an extra cable to keep them separately on higher heat. And yeah, that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching.